Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Damien's Midweek Markets, the show where I talk about what's been going on in investment markets and what to look out for in the days and weeks ahead. Now, this is going to be the last show of 2020, so we'll be back in the new year 2021 where we'll pick up where markets are going. We're also going to have a look, have a do an outlook uh, piece on the Sunday podcast in the new year. So make sure you listen out for that as well. But where are we as we come to a close on 2020? Now, last week I talked a lot about keeping an eye on the pound dollar exchange rate. Now, the exchange rate had been fluctuating between $1.32 and $1.35. And it was all based around whether there would be a Brexit deal. And we've seen a lot of fluctuation up and down. And as I make this particular show this week, we've finally shown a sense of direction and we've broken above the $1.35 level, which is a key level actually it was a resistance level we were struggling to break through that and the fact that we are and if we can close above there that could suggest that we're going to see more strength in the pound going forward now the reason for it is because of positive rumors and headlines surrounding a possible brexit deal now this is as i say rumors it's not fact as yet so if it gets proven that we can't get a deal, then don't be surprised if we see the pound weaken against the dollar and pretty much every other currency out there. But as I make this video, the signs are that we could potentially get a deal. So strengthening pound is good and bad news. The good news is the fact that it shows there's a potential positive outcome of Brexit. Now that would be good for UK smaller companies. It will be good for the general mood of risk appetite out there if we do get a deal. I mean, for the overseas assets you hold in your portfolio, particularly, say, US equities, for example, then they were taking a hit of late because as the pound strengthens against the dollar, it means your overseas holdings are worth less when you convert them back into pounds because of that exchange rate. And that means that even though there's been some strong rallies that we've seen on overseas assets, you may not have seen that reflected in your own portfolios because it's unlikely you would have hit out the currency exposure. That is just part for the course. But as we go forward, it'll be interesting to see what happens to that exchange rate. So we are still, even though we're at the back end of 2020, still talking about some of the same things that we were earlier on in the year. I mean, Brexit is still rumbling on. We don't know we're going to have a deal or not. That is one of the biggest market moving events that we could have probably between now and the end of the year although it seems to be the market is pricing in that we're going to get a deal so if we don't get a deal that's probably going to be the biggest shock to markets of course we are still talking about whether we're going to have some stimulus from the US government and possibly more from the Federal Reserve. They are actually giving some economic forecasts uh, today. So that may be a market moving event later on today. It's expected they're going to just announce possibly or tweaks of their QE programs, but largely no one's expecting anything too exciting to happen there. So we are still talking about COVID and vaccines and rotations, particularly small caps outperforming large caps. We have seen profit taking in the last week that has to be said so across the board whether it's the FTSE 100 whether it's the small caps whether it's US equities whether it was gold we've seen the market pull back slightly in all of those assets and then rally again slightly so we've seen the market pretty much tread water in the last week as everybody's waiting to see what's going to happen now there is of course the Santa rally phenomenon which I've talked about and pretty much now is the point where historically if you look at the seasonal averages going back sort of decades from the middle of the month that's when you see the Santa rally really start to kick into gear and pick up as we go into that year end so it'll be interesting to see what happens this year 2020 is one of those years where it doesn't seem to go according to any historical norm so will we see that Santa rally and of course the fact we had a US election in the same year is always a, a positive for a Santa rally phenomenon to occur so we head into the end of the year with a lot of unanswered questions. The market is waiting to see what happens on a number of things we've been talking about for a while. So I just want to focus very quickly on 2020 as a whole. Now, when we went into 2020, we came off the back of a cracking year. 2019, the FTSE 100, for example, was up about 12%. We were very optimistic going into 2020 about UK politics, about the uh, potential 
Brexit solution, the FTSE 100 was pushing up towards its own all-time highs, and then COVID came and the pandemic. Nobody saw that coming. You could look to any forecast or outlook, you wouldn't have heard a mention of a pandemic in there. And of course, the pandemic sent nearly every equity market tumbling about 30%. The difference is the FTSE 100 has never really recovered to the full extent like the rest of the world. It's still down about 13.5% year to date. The FTSE 250 is down around 10%, done a little bit better with that rotation into smaller companies. So the outlook at that point was for, before COVID was known about, as we went into 2020, there were a lot of people expecting some real positive moves in the FTSE 100, some predicting that we could go up 10%. Well, of course, we are nowhere near positive territory for the year to date. We could see, obviously, some positive into the year end, but it's likely we're going to still finish down by the end of 2020. Jump across to the other side of the pond, the S&P 500 was predicted to as a kind of consensus forecast, predicted to rally about 6.5% in 2020. So that was what the average of the big investment banks were forecasting. Well, you may be surprised to know that the S&P 500 is actually, year to date, up around 14%. That's despite the pandemic. That's despite the crash to the lows that we saw on the 23rd of March 2020, where the markets were down around about 30%. They've rebounded since that mass stimulus from the Federal Reserve and other central banks pushed the market higher. So what we have seen is the analysts were too optimistic on the UK and they were too pessimistic on the S&P 500 and US equities. If you're interested in the rest of the world, Japanese equities, emerging markets and Asian equities are up around in line with what the US um, stock market has done year to date, somewhere between 12-14%. So Europe is down around 6.5% year to date. So they are the other laggard alongside the FTSE 100. People are hoping, predicting that maybe 2021 will be the year where European equities and particularly UK equities play a, a massive catch up because they look quite cheap. But the message I want to give is expect the unexpected. Nobody expected the black swan event of the coronavirus. We can't predict them. But what happened is everybody fell in love with a particular narrative. And as we go into 2021, we st- there's still a feel of that happening now. Everyone's predicting the market can only go higher. We're going to have a vaccine. It's all going to be great. But we hear stories of mass redundancies. If you look at the earnings per share of most companies or the forecast for them, they're way, way down on where they were a year ago. Yet the valuations of those companies are 30, 40, whatever percentage higher. You can almost pick your number. So you can see markets can appear stretched, but we've had a flood of easy money from central banks around the world, which is why we are in the position that we are in terms of equity market. So the message is not that we're going to necessarily have a crash imminently or whether the markets are going to explode higher imminently, but it's not to fall in love with a particular narrative. And if you go back to last weekend's podcast on the Money to the Message podcast, I did a whole piece about the dangers of having a bearish or bullish um, leaning narrative that you're permanently attached to because it can end up hurting your portfolio for a number of reasons. If you're not listening to it, go back and listen to it. It'll be very useful going into 2021 to bear in mind so don't try and predict where markets are going to go do expect the unexpected so that is it for this week on Damien's Midweek Markets in fact it's that's it for 2020 I think we're all glad to see the back of 2020 although it has turned out to be a profitable year if you've not invested exclusively in UK equities as ever you can contact me email Damien at moneytothemasses.com, Twitter, money to the masses with the number two, Instagram, you can contact us, and of course, Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.